So now we're going to continue our look at sea urchin fertilization by entitling the next flowchart the same thing, SUF for sea urchin fertilization 2. And I misspoke in the last video, it's not figure 47.13, you want to continue to be looking at figure 47.3. So I'll annotate that correctly um, as we move forward. So sea urchin fertilization 2, we're going to continue our look at the steps, steps continued. And so now let's reiterate, we have the jelly coat, release those chemicals. Chemicals were an attractive mechanism for the sperm. The sperm met with the egg via a chemotaxis event. Then we have the acrosomal reaction that's going to cause the acrosomal process to form. And now what? Once we've made the acrosomal process, once we've digested partially through the jelly coat, what's next? What's next is step four, which we'll uh, say is when sperm plus egg are going to recognize, we already know that because we had the protein molecules recognize each other via a lock and key mechanism, but the consequence of this recognition causes plasma membrane fusion. Plasma membrane fusion is between both the sperm plasma membrane and also the egg plasma membrane. This is going to result in something known as plasmogamy the fusion of plasma membranes, which is plasmogamy. Plasmogamy is a specific event that states and results in the following overall sort of consequence. The sperm nucleus is going to enter the egg. That's what you should think of as plasmogamy. When the sperm nucleus enters the egg, you fuse two structures, two plasma membranes, the sperm, the nucleus has a membrane around it, remember, and you also have the plasma membrane of the egg that's going to fuse together in this plasmogamy event. Please note, we have not fused nuclei yet. We have not fused genomes yet. Thus, we have not created a zygote yet. Even though sperm is within the egg, until we fuse those two nuclei, we have not created a viable, living, eventual organism that is starting as a zygote. We're going to get to that, okay? So that's step four, plasmogamy, essentially. Plasma membrane fusion. So now what's step five? Step five can be thought of in two ways that are going to occur pretty much simultaneously. So what we're going to do is we're going to devote step 5a on this side here. And then over here, we'll talk about step 5b. Let's do step 5a first. Step 5a is something known as the fast block. The fast block to polyspermy. So if you remember, polyspermy was something we wanted to prevent. So how are we going to prevent it specifically? We said broadly in the overview of fertilization, the egg surface changes. And now let's look at the details associated with those changes via the fast block mechanism that prevents polyspermy. So let's see what happens here. Initially, what you need to understand about this is that when you have an unfertilized egg, a regular old egg that's floating around in the water that the sea urchin is living in, the egg as a cell, generally speaking, is polarized. So this is the state that the unfertilized egg is in. Polarized simply means, if you remember from bio 1, we're going to have an overall sort of cytoplasm that's within the egg that is relatively negatively charged. So the cytoplasm is negatively charged. Now, this is going to have a major consequence to fertilization, as we'll see. So we basically have this egg, and the majority of the inside of it is negatively charged. Thus, we consider the egg in a polarized state. Why is it negatively charged? Well, the majority of molecules that consist and make up the cytoplasm are going to have negative uh, polar components to them. And thus, we're going to have an overall negative charge as a natural state of the egg. Now what we're going to do is the following. The fast block is going to happen. Within seconds, within seconds, one, two, maybe three seconds, what's going to happen is once you have the sperm and egg recognized, once you have fast block initiated upon the recognition, this is going to be flipped upside down. The egg plasma membrane, the egg plasma membrane, uh, ion channels open. So remember, ions are small, charged particles, 
Okay? And we're going to have these channels that allow in small charged particles open up once we have a plasmogamy occur. So plasmogamy happens, then the fast block to polyspermy happens. The fast block to polyspermy is within seconds of plasmogamy, you're going to have the egg plasma membranes ion channels open. What is this going to cause? This is going to obviously cause something to come in because you're opening channels. You're going to be causing sodium ions, Na+. Notice the plus here. This is a positively charged ion. So sodium ions rush in. They are going to flow in at a great rate. They're going to rush in. They're going to cause what's known as egg depolarization. Depolarization. If the egg was initially polarized, we're going to depolarize. What does that mean? That means we're going to cause the egg to become, not negative, but to become depolar. The opposite of polar, positive, because Positive ions are rushing in. This is going to cause depolarization. And this is all going to be in about one to three seconds after sperm binds. After, I'll say, binding. So just notice the timeline that we're in. Why are we talking in seconds? Why are we talking in this timeline? Because this is the fast block to polysperm. So once we have this big deal, what is this going to cause? This is going to cause the egg to be sort of unattractive to fellow sperm that are floating around in the medium of water. Because what's going to happen is this overall state of a positively charged egg is weird to sperm. The sperm that are floating around are not going to want to fertilize a positively charged egg because that is a sign that something has already, it's already about to fertilize the egg because they've already had a plasmogamy event within them. So this is basically a sign to all the other sperm to say, back off. I've already been possibly fertilized through this plasmogamy. You don't need to do anything. So what we're going to broadly state is that this eventual event prevents fusion with any other sperm because of depolarized egg. Think of a depolarized egg as unattractive to sperm because it shows that there's already something that has caused depolarization. But now what we have to state is that this doesn't last very long. This is a very transient event. Remember, we're trying to stop polyspermy. We're trying to stop other sperm. Clearly we are right here. We're showing ourselves as already polarized or depolarized. Do not come and try to fertilize me. But this is a transient event. It's a fast block to polyspermy. Transient simply means that this is a short event that only lasts about one minute. So how are we going to deal with the post one minute uh, attempts at polyspermy? The egg can't be in this depolarized state for more than one minute. So how do you stop other sperm from then coming in one minute later? 